I know a thing or two about creating a challenge on RuneScape. I've created over 60 of them for Gilinor Games alone over the past three seasons. Today, we're mixing it up. This time, the players are going to give me challenges. And if I fail, my account gets deleted. Ah, sorry, wrong series. If I fail, they get 50 million GP. With Gilinor Games Season 4 coming out this spring, it's time for me and you guys to get into the season of challenges. 8sat from Season 3 of Gilinor Games has a challenge for me called Money Tile. You have 15 minutes to make as much money as possible, starting with nothing. Once the challenge is finished, the amount of GP you made needs to be divided by the amount of tiles you ran over while making the money. No world topping is allowed, and POH usage is off limits, but you do have unlimited teleports to the Grand Exchange. I mean, I know a thing or two about making money, but having to worry about how many tiles I run over, that adds quite a twist to it. I gave myself five minutes of prep time for this since that's how long the players of GG have and I decided to start this challenge off at these paladins in the Artie castle. I believe I have this guy trapped right here. He can't move and I'm actually going to turn on the tile man mode plugin while I'm here. But I'm going to start pickpocketing him. Every time I successfully pickpocket this paladin, I receive two chaos runes and a coin pouch. So when I open up this coin pouch, you can see I have five of them. So I'm getting 100 GP or so every time from this coin pouch as well as two chaos runes. Look at those chaos runes stacking up and the coin pouches, it's so much. I think it's time we do a little monster hunter, and I'm not talking about Slayer. You get it because you kill monsters when doing Slayer, but this isn't about Slayer and Never mind. A limited time crossover is happening between two iconic franchises, Raid Shadow Legends and Monster Hunter. From now until March 5th, players will be able to collect five Monster Hunter themed legendary champions within Raid Shadow Legends. Everyone will be able to get Rathalos Blade Master for free. Dude sounds like he should be the villain for a RuneScape questline. All you have to do is simply log into Raid for seven days between now and March 5th, and he's yours. There's a bunch of in-game community events happening as well, so make sure to check it out. There's so much to do when you download Raid Shadow Legends. Play through an exciting campaign, collect hundreds of champions with unprecedented customization, and most importantly, join my clan in game. Seriously, we need more people. The Cursed City update is one of Raid's biggest features with over 100 stages to complete. Take down Raid bosses, complete various quests, and get your hands on a mythical champion. While you're at it, check out the Lunar Festival event that's going on as well. It brings a powerful new skill type and some awesome new champions. This game seriously has so much content. If you're new, click my link in the description or scan the QR code on screen. You can get awesome in-game loot and once you hit level 15, this epic boss killer, Juliana. And please, join my clan, there's less than 20 spots left. Hit the link in the description and join me in-game. Thanks to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. For this banning, since we don't want to use a lot of tiles, pickpocketing and trapping an NPC in an area is perfect because we get a lot of GP and we don't use many tiles. A minute in, we already have five and a half K. This is actually a really, really good starter money maker for this challenge. I'm gonna do this for another minute and I'm gonna go to the Grand Exchange and buy the stuff I need to buy next. Oh, he moved. Oh no. Okay, well, I, I can't stop here. I thought I had him trapped, but he got out. So we end with 5,000 GP and 126 Chaos Runes. Now, one thing I have to be careful of is pathing. I don't want to take an extra tile here at all, since that will affect my final total, my final score. So we have 5k. We're also going to sell these Chaos Runes for a pretty reliable 17.6k. Okay, really good amount of money to make at the start, at least I think. The next ring we're going to go for is a Skills Necklace. With this Skills Necklace, I'm going to go to the Woodcutting Guild. This is tricky because a lot of the good stuff I want to do requires me to use quite a few tiles. Ah, this is a lot of tiles. I'm committed now. I am committed. So as you guys all know, with the sawmill, we can abuse nails. And the other thing we can abuse is these bolts of cloth. So we're going to go back to the Grand Exchange now with what we just bought. And we're going to sell them and see how much we made off that. 8.5k. Okay, actually, that wasn't that much. So I'm at 55 tiles right now. Kind of more than I had hoped, but that's the thing. When it comes to... No, I just used two extra tiles. Why am I running? Oh, my, I'm actually choking. I just used three tiles there when that should not have happened. Buy out the nails, buy out the bolts of cloth. It's just the one thing I have to do for this. I'll make a little bit more every single time until I can eventually just start consistently buying these bolts of cloth, a full inventory of them. Okay, we had enough GP to buy the skills necklace six. We have our refreshed ring of wealth and we're gonna continue this for the rest of the time. We'll see how much we make. Don't forget that your challenge today is to subscribe to the channel. Let me know how you do. 
the the issue with this is that sometimes I'll get a spawn in at the woodcutting guild where I spawn in all the way back there when my teleport comes in and I use, end up using three tiles, which is really detrimental for this. Detrimental, that was a hard word to say. This is kind of interesting, guys. I just realized this. If I buy out the bronze nails and exit out of the shop, they restock instantly every time. Look how many bronze nails I'm getting. That is so fast and they're so cheap. I could do this for a long time. I don't know if that's new or not. Have bronze nails always just instantly restocked every time you open up the sawmill? I don't know. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are... Oh, what is that spawn? We have officially 30 seconds left. So this is the final trip to the woodcutting guild to buy these bolts of cloth. Rest of the nails, buy the bolts of cloth, and that's going to do it. 15 seconds. Of course, I get an awful spawn into the Grand Exchange. Use up two more tiles. Sell these. Sell these. Okay, we're going to sell the skills necklace as the final thing. And... We are looking at 108,000 GP in 15 minutes using as few tiles as possible. So with this score now, we have to look at the exact amount of GP we have, 108,093, and we unlocked 78 tiles while doing this. So divided by 78. So our final score for this challenge is 1,385.8. That's gonna be the final score, 1385.8 for this challenge. Now here's the exciting thing about this. Is that good? Is that bad? I don't know because he just sent it to me as a test and I tried it out. So that's why I'm curious kind of for you guys, if you try this out, what you end up getting. Now there are absolutely better ways to do this challenge. I think it's pretty interesting. If I had just stayed pickpocket paladins the entire time, I would have made about 50,000 GP and used about 18 tiles going to and from the Grand Exchange. That would have given me a score of around 2,800, which is way better than my 1385 using the Woodcutting Guild, just mainly because I used way less tiles. That's the tough thing about these Gilnar Games challenges though. You have five minutes to come up with a plan with a strategy, and usually you just have to trust that that strategy is going to work. You gotta trust your gut, and for me, it probably wasn't the best play. I think I probably would have been eliminated in this one, but it is a really fun challenge, and I'm I'm curious what you guys think might be the best strategy for this. Let me know in the comments or feel free to post your results in my Discord. C Engineer from seasons one, two, and three of Gilnor Games has a challenge called Helpless. Do a master clue scroll with no Runelite plugins, no OSR's wiki or Googling, and no hints. You are allowed to ask players from the street for help. This is unbelievably evil. I'm out here getting my elite clue for this master scroll challenge from C Engineer, and I just got back to back Guthin's War Spears. These are my first two Barrows kills in a very long time. You know how they say if you don't do something for a long time, or if you don't log in for a long time, you come back and get lucky? Yeah, this is literally proof that it happens. C Engineer, no plugins, no wiki, no hints. Master clue. Let's see how long it takes me. First step show this to Sherlock. Very easy. Mix a ranging mix potion. Okay, what goes in a ranging mix? I think caviar and a two-dose ranging potion. Let's see if my knowledge comes in hot here. Range, oh, it's not gonna tell me. Oh, and I can't look it up. Oh, shoot. Okay, I'm gonna go off my gut. I think it's caviar and a ranging potion. I think. Okay, leaping sturgeons. Shout out the unusual moneymaker for this. Caviar, two-dose? Ranging mix. Oh my god. I actually did one. I didn't think I'd be able to do it, but we remembered it. The knowledge comes in hot. Step number one, done. Give me another one. Come on. Who to speak to next? Okay. Mus kill reader. So this has to be... Oh, Jesus. I should know this. Mus kill reader. Okay, I have to think about this one. Dear Remus Lick. Rixum leader. Sikram le leader. See, I could message somebody for help about this, but they would probably just look it up on the wiki. And I don't know if I want that. I kind of want to figure it out on my own eventually. Read, read maybe? Reader, read must. Urkel, Redimus Urkel? Wait, I'm almost positive that, okay. To give you guys perspective, this is currently what I'm cooking up in the notepad. We have Must Kill Reader, Dear Remus Lick, Must Rick Leader, Real Kid Remus, Dare Ryle Musk, Read Miss Relic, Radimus Urkel. That's an NPC, right? Radimus Urkel? Radimus Urkel. Okay, I think it's Legends Guild. You know, this is kind of an interesting Gil in Our Games challenge, doing a master clue from scratch without any help. The issue is that I can't give everybody the same clue with the same steps. If I gave everybody the same clue with the same steps, this would be very possible. Yes, okay. Radimus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Lord have mercy. When is the last time any of you did a puzzle box without the helper? Am I allowed to look up a picture that for reference? I don't think I am. I literally am not allowed to use Google. Well, this tree is already put together. So maybe we fin- Okay, let's just finish off the tree. I, I do enjoy a good puzzle box. Yeah. 
sorry, solo mission moment. Puzzle box is done. Do we finish? I'm so proud of myself for that one. Uh, doing a puzzle box without a picture helping is actually so satisfying. It definitely takes longer, but the satisfaction I got just from doing that is um, making me very happy. Step number four. No, I was hoping we wouldn't get one of these. Oh man, one of several rhyming brothers in business attire with an obsession for paperwork. This has to be tiles or piles, right? Tiles, okay, I am pretty sure this is the guy who's standing in front of the Wilderness Resource Arena, because I know he is a brother of somebody, Tiles, Piles, whatever his name is. Dying on a Master Clue challenge would be very fitting though. Yeah, so this guy right here, what's his name? Oh, this is Mandrith. Nah, this guy did, I thought it was Tiles or Piles. Shoot. Okay, I know this guy's here. Yeah, okay, Files, but this isn't him, is it? Damn it, he has a brother. I know he has a brother, or a rhyming guy. Maybe I'm wrong. A dwarf approaching death, but very much in the light. That one I know, I'm gonna go do that one. That one I'm almost 99% sure is the dwarf that's standing in front of the death altar during the quest for Morning Zen Part 2. I'm almost certain. I've done quite a few masters and elites in my day, so some of these are coming back to me now. And then we just go through this portal, and I think we just talked to this guy and we should be good. Adorable. Okay, awesome. One step done. Anger Ab Abbott Langley. I am going to go double check. I'm going to go talk to him with an Asian staff and see if that's all we need. Nice, nice. Okay, two are done. Now this last step, one of several rhyming brothers in business attire with an obsession for paperwork. I'm going to go to the Grand Exchange. I have to ask. I'm going to be lost otherwise. You know what, actually? I'm going to go to a high level world. I'm going to go to a 2.2k total world. I've deserved the right to use that world, having trained to 2.2k total. Is there an NPC that rhymes with files? Come on, look at all these max capes. One, please. No. What the f***? It's Jebrim. Piles. Where is Piles? Giles. Where is Giles? Wildy is Piles. Resource area. Oh my god. Oh my god, I'm so dumb. I am so dumb. I was right the whole time. He's inside the resource area. I was thinking it was the guy outside the resource area. Oh my. Of course he is, because you can use him to unnote stuff. I'm actually so mad. He was right here too. I didn't even right click on him. That is painful, but it's funny. It's actually so funny. Shout out to these guys at the GE for helping me remember the NPC is in the resource area. Dance in the King Black Dragon lair. Beware of double agents. Equip a Black Dragon Eye body, Black Dragon Eye Vembraces, and a Black Dragon Mask. I have this stash unit already built, so I should be good at just to go there. Look at this Wildy map, by the way. Shout out to the teleport maps plugin. Look how easy it is to remember where this stuff is. I can just click on five and teleport, and I'm ready to log. If I see a white dot, don't see a white dot, but I'm ready to hop right away. Okay, that was a pretty self-explanatory step. Next step is show this to Sherlock. Fantastic. I love these steps because I can do all of them. Create a set of fire remains. I know how to do this. This one sucks though. I might have remains. I don't, but you know what I do have? And this is why I always keep this. I have a gold key red, which means I should just be able to go into the area in Shades of Morton where the shades are and kill one and I should be able to cremate it. I should be able to open all of these with my key. This is why you keep as many things as possible in your bank because one day you're gonna need them. There they are. I need to kill one of these. So if I just head to the funeral pyre, place the logs on them, place the shade on them, and then just light it. Nice! And then we get a key. A hard clue actually would be pretty nice from this. Let's see what we get. Okay, a battle staff and some swampletic space. I'll take it. There is a possibility, I think, that this actually ends the master clue. Oh, it doesn't though. How many steps are we at? Five. Sherlock back to back? Okay, anagram. A five letter anagram. I should get this, right? Okay, rogue. R-O-U-G-E, rogue. Rogue. This is what it has to be, right? Rogue? Rugo. I have no idea. I would think with five letters, this wouldn't be hard. I'm really wishing there was an NPC database right now in the client so I could look this stuff up. I'm going to go check the Gutenoth area where all the ogres are. Only thing I can think of right now is that this letter combination is somehow connected to one of those ogres, just because it kind of looks like ogre. Enclave guard. Ogre Trader. Nah, these guys don't have names. Nah, they don't have... I'm gonna go check south of Castle Wars. I beg it's there. Castle Wars, Uglugnar, Grish, Grug, 
Pilg. Man, these are kind of close. Grug. But I can't think of any other places where ogres are. I guess I could just go to the rogue's castle and speak to a rogue. But I don't ever remember that being a step. Okay, there's a rogue right there. But there's no option to talk to them. There's no talk option. I'm gonna pickpocket though. How much money? Easy 26. It's been 25 minutes now on this clue step. This was going really well until this step. And I don't wanna go to the Grand Exchange yet because I've already done that for files and I feel like doing that twice. I may honestly just do what I never really wanted to do and run around the game right clicking on NPCs, but I wanna be a bit strategic about it. The only thing I can think of with this step is that this is gonna be a weirdly, an NPC with a strange name. Where are NPCs with strange names? That wouldn't be any of the, any of the major cities. Yeah. Yeah, like the elves, maybe. Maybe Bergdorot? I'll go check Bergdorot. A five letter NPC. Basil, Florin. Yeah, actually, it could be here. These guys have strange names. Not strange, just kind of interesting. Callan, Theodore. Oh, it has to be here. Look, the, look, they're all five letters. Oral. Soren. You guys have never even heard of these people. Don't even lie, by the way. Don't even lie. I don't want to see a single comment about being. I've, I've heard of these NPCs before. Except for... Oh, sh**. A star. I was the first one to find it, too. Nobody's here. It's not here. I'm so sad. I really thought it was going to be here. Shoot, man. I don't want to run through Prif. There are so many NPCs in Prif. I'm going to try Letya. This could take all day. Oh, this is actually promising. Udav. Or on when I'm committing to the idea of running around every single city or area trying to find whoever this is. I'm doing it. I'm playing by the rules, Tom. Eowyn. This is not Lord of the Rings. Lilowin. Goru. No way. It's him. There's no shot, dude. Goru. Please, it has to be. There's no way it's not. Oh my god. That is so lucky. That is so lucky, dude. I don't even care about the fact that I got a light box because I'm just going to be spamming this. I'm just going to spam it until it works. I just don't even care. That was about a 30 minute step. There we go. That's all you got to do. All you got to do is spam click. Goru, give me the casket, baby. It's done. It's done. Okay, official time to do a master clue with no plugins, no wiki, no Googling, and one question asked at the Grand Exchange. One hour, 17 minutes. One hour and 17 minutes. To be honest with you, I don't think it's that bad. The Goru was by far the hardest one. I'm not going to say I got lucky, okay? Maybe I got lucky that I found him. However, I did problem solve my way here, okay? I knocked out the areas that I thought it could be, and we found him. Please. Okay. Wait, what? That was my 69th master. I got two collection log slots, but it was worth 90K. I guess for cloggers, this is the greatest clue of all time. But for me, who just wants gold pieces, horrid. Why do I look like that? What is it doing to my eyes, man? <laughs> Framed from seasons 1, 2, and 3 of Gilinar Games has a challenge called High Key. You have 30 minutes to kill 5 players in the wilderness for their loot keys without ever leaving the wilderness. Your budget for your PK setup is 20 mil. At no point during the challenge can you leave the wilderness or use a bank. Every Gilinar Games season has its iconic PvP related challenge. This one seems kind of hard. Let's see how I do. Okay, 20 million GP to come up with a PK and gear setup where I can get 5 keys in the wilderness without leaving. I cannot bank. Just realized this guy looks like Jimmy. Has Jimmy just been standing in front of the Grand Exchange all these years? Wow. This will be the setup for the 30 minute challenge. We spent 14.4 million GP, the majority of it, of course, on this AGS. We need a good KO weapon, I think. So that's what we're going to go with. Rest of the gear is pretty mediocre. Black Dehyde, Blood Bark. We have an Infernal Cape with a Trover Parchment, so we keep it no matter what. Opal Bolts. So I think we should be able to get five kills, but again, I'm a little bit worried about my DPS. I cannot kill five PKers. I can maybe kill one PKer and four defensive people, but the challenge is five keys and 30 minutes, so that's what we're going to try to do. Now, one thing I could do is just get five kills in the same place in five minutes. I think I could do it at the Rogue's Castle, for example, where I'm going right now. I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is get five kills in five different places in the wilderness in 30 minutes. We are going to head to the Rogue's Castle first, though, mainly because there was an update to these Rogue's chests, and they get much better loot. I think maybe even better XP or something. I don't know, but there's a lot of people here at the moment. Usually, they don't fight back, and hopefully, they can get us a key nice and early. If we can get one kill every five five to six minutes or so, we would be on pace for five keys. There's a guy right here. 
Looks like he has nothing on him. Let's see if we can get the kill. All right, this should be the end of it. Please. There we go. Good fight. Sorry, bro. That is just part of the challenge. One key down. Since I don't have teleblock, I just kind of have to camp areas above 30 wilderness. Otherwise, they'll just be able to teleport out. So maybe a Scorpia kill cave, maybe a wilderness resource area kill. That's what we're going to have to go for. We're going to go for the people fishing at dark crabs. Somebody over there. I saw him. What is going on over there? Interesting. Is that guy doing a clue? Freezing him? These guys must be friends. Nice. This guy has a something on him. I'm just gonna go for the AGS again. A zero AGS is not good. Can we catch him? Long range, long range, long range. Hit him, long range. We got him. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god, can we get out? No, there's no way we get out. Oh, smited too. Good fight. I kept my AGS. Here you go, Kev. I have your money. What do you have to say? Bro, you are some ass at PK. That's all I have to say, bro. Thank you. Vertoso from seasons one, two, and three of Gilnar Games is an iconic challenge maker himself. He has a challenge for me called Letter of the Law. Spin a wheel containing every letter of the alphabet 11 times to give yourself 11 letters. You then have to buy yourself a gear setup that uses items beginning with those 11 letters. You'll have 1 million GP to buy gear and supplies with to go through the fight caves and kill Jad. 11 spins on the wheel. Let's see what letters we end up with. T, L, B, C, K, V, B, D, R, J, U. And the last letter is I. Okay, so we have our letters T, L, B, C, K, V, D, R, J, U, I. Let's see what gear setup we can buy. Something I was actually really hoping for was the letter K from this because it gets me the Carol's crossbow. And I also unlocked the letter B, which lets me get bolt racks. The Carol's crossbow used to be my go-to weapon for fire caves back in the day. So this is very, very good. I'm gonna play it safe and buy two things thousand bolt racks. I hope it's enough. It's 100k though. It's actually quite expensive. For the letter R, we're going to go with the classic rune gloves. Barracks helm will be our letter V purchase. I feel like the unholy symbol is a must buy for the U slot. It gives a bit of range bonus and of course prayer bonus. So we're going to go with that for you. This one's kind of crazy, but we're going to go with a leather body for the letter L. I mean, like it says right here, this is better than no armor. For the letter C, we're going to go with a construction cape. And fun fact, I thought the cape of legends was going to be my choice, but the construction cape actually has better stats. For a little bit of defense, we're going to go with Torag's plate legs for the letter T. This is 300k, however, wow, almost on the dot. It will be a really, really crucial piece for us since it will tank a lot of damage from the stuff during the fight caves. And to also tank a little bit more, we're gonna go with the dragon boots for the letter D. These things are very cheap these days, only 117k. They used to be so much more, no longer. All we have left is the ring slot. We can't fill the shield slot because we have a two-handed Carol's crossbow. But the thing is, there are no rings in the game that have the letter I or J other than a jade ring which has absolutely no stats whatsoever, but we're going to fill it because, well, that's kind of the point of the challenge. Now, what I could do is say, hey guys, I have an imbued archer's ring, which does start with the letter I, but I'm going to say for the sake of the challenge, here it actually starts with an A, so it just wouldn't count. Just so I can finish off all the letters, I'm going to go with an iron dart for the letter I. I'm just going to buy a thousand of these, or hopefully enough. And these should all buy. If I happen to run out of bolt racks somehow, I'll have these iron darts as backup, which I'm hoping is going to be enough. All the letters have officially been filled. We have 229k to figure out the rest of our inventory. After purchasing the supplies, we are down to 957,000 GP. So 1 million GP down to 957. I feel like that's pretty good. Lots of prayer potions, some ceridoma brews, and some summer pies as our food. Throwback to season two of Gilnor Games when Guns Chili and Solo Mission use summer pies in the Fight Pits community game to get some extra energy, and I'm hoping the energy from these summer pies should hopefully let me run around the caves for quite a bit longer than usual. Now, I know what you're thinking. This setup here looks pretty good for the challenge, and I really think it does. I think I rolled pretty well and chose the right items. That being said, I'm not the greatest player ever, so let's see how this goes. In to the fight caves we go. I have a pretty tanky setup, honestly, with the Torax play legs, the Varax helm, even the construction cape adding a little bit, the rune gloves, the dragon boots. The only thing that isn't that great, of course, is the leather body, but that's a completely okay sacrifice to me. The Carol's Crossbow also just always puts in work at Fight Caves. I'm telling you, every time you come here with the Carol's Crossbow, it hits way better than anywhere else in the game. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not fully confident in the amount of bolt racks that I bought, so I'm gonna play it a little bit safe here and just use my iron darts on some of the Tizkex, the smaller monsters pretty much, and save the bolt racks for the bigger guys. We should be good, but these could be my famous last words.
accidentally just took a hit from the major. That I, got, I think I got chance there. I actually think I got chance. That would have been the end of the run. Probably the best possible spawn for wave 61. I just stand here and both are immediately trapped with the Ketsek right here. Actually, I think that is genuinely the best spawn if you are safe spotting in this spot. All right, here we go. Two Ketseks. Don't forget, guys. Wherever the orange Ketsex spawns, that's where Jad spawns. Fun fact. Also, something funny about the Ketsex, I thought the brown spots here used to be his eyes, and looking at it from this direction, turns out his eyes are actually just back here in this spot, the yellow things. I just, I don't know, for some reason, I always thought those were his eyes. All right, Jad should spawn right here. Moment of truth. Good luck. Okay, I may have looked away from my screen and taken a rain shift. We don't talk about it. Final moments of the Jad should be the final hit, and we are good to go. Fire cape complete, one hour and eight minutes to do this one. And I did an elite combat task. What is a near miss? I have no idea. Maybe that's take a Jad hit? Wait, is that actually what it is? Tis talk Jad, complete the fight caves after surviving a hit from Jad without praying. Okay, maybe it's a good thing we did that. We got ourselves a combat achievement out of it. Very nice. The fire cape has officially been achieved from Vertoso's challenge. Well done. Honestly, a lot longer than I hoped it was going to be an hour, eight minutes. I was kind of hoping for sub one hour, sub 50 minutes, but it is what it is. We got the cape. I know what you guys are thinking. Trade in the cape to go for the pet. Well, fun fact, already have it. Who's jealous? His name is... Is, I have no idea. What should I name my jetpack? This next challenge comes from Allie, a Gilnor Games viewer in my Discord. She says that I have to make my way from Lumbridge to Varrock using only red clicks, but along the way, I need to pick up 14 unique items off the ground. If you yellow click, you lose. This is a super cool variation of the Seeing Red challenge. Let's see how we do. So my strategy for this is to first head to Lumbridge kitchen. These red clicks, I tell you what, they look easy when you're running, but as soon as you get to the door, as soon as you click on something, not that easy. The red clicks are tricky, guys. Never underestimate how much your character moves and how much it can mess up your movement. Lumbridge Kitchen has quite a few things in it, which is why I'm going here first. Is that burnt meat a spawn? It is definitely not a spawn. So there's four items just like that. I'm even going to do one thing better, which is abuse the spawns in Lumbridge basement. We have the leather boots down here. We have a bucket and a cabbage. We already have a jug and we already have a knife and we already have the other leather boots on. But there we go, seven items already down. And now let's carefully click our way back towards the center. Is there any other spawns here? There is, there's a mind root spawn. That was a very ballsy red click right there. Shouldn't have done that, but we're racing. What is spawned over there on those stairs? That is a, a bronze arrow. I don't think I ever realized a bronzed arrow spawns there. Okay, we are nine items down without using a single yellow click. We're gonna start making our way towards Vera. Here's the interesting thing. I already have nine items, but if there's people who are doing this who are already going up to Varok with more items, they would be ahead of me. But this is just the first thing that came to my mind. There is an iron dagger here as well. We're gonna grab that. And we're gonna start using these trees to make our way up towards Varok. We are 12 items down. Only two items left to fill up the inventory. The nice thing about the run from Lumbridge to Varrock is that there's a lot of trees, so there's always things to red click. Okay, let's click on the egg. Is there a feather on the ground maybe? Nope, just eggs. That's okay. 13 items, only one item left for 14, and we are good to go. I truly despise run energy on this game, I really do. We have entered Varrock, and we now need to find our final item to pick up before we get to Varrock Center. Close the door but I do want to go in there. I'm just looking for red dots on my mini map. There's any, if there's anything I can pick up, there is something back there. What is it? It's a pot. I already have a pot. That is not good. Uh, red click, red click. We'll open the door back there. I need one more spawn though before I get to Varrock Center. I'm still missing a spawn. I'm still missing something. I can't go to the center yet. I'm not done. I'm wasting time. There is something in this building, which is a leather body. Okay, leather body is the final item we need. Leather body, pick it up. 14 items done, and now we go back to Varrock Center and finish off the run with zero run energy. Talk to Romeo. Perfectly gets us into the center of Varrock. Okay, and the challenge is finished. 14 items, and we are done in just under six minutes. This is a pretty neat little challenge. You can really optimize this to make it as fast as possible. I know for a fact my time is nowhere near the best time possible, but this is pretty fun. I might have to try this again. Five challenges, four wins, and one loss. I'll take it.
I would love to see how all of you do in these challenges as well. What would you have done differently to beat my scores? Feel free to post it in the comments below or join my Discord. We have a dedicated Gilner Games channel where you can talk about challenges and banning suggestions or just talk about the seasons themselves. I hope you all enjoyed this new type of video from me. If you want to see more, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you all in the next one.